An Early Warning Intervention and Monitoring System, or eWIMS, is an evidence-based, data-driven approach to supporting students who may be at risk of dropping out of school. eWIMS is based on the premise that disengagement from school is a gradual process and that students send identifiable signals that they are on the path to dropping out. As a result, data can be used to identify trends among students, enabling educators to intervene with those who are likely to leave the education system. Educators follow seven steps as they work in teams to support students through the eWIMS process. Step 1. Establish roles and responsibilities. Step 2. Use the early warning data tool. Step 3. Review early warning data. Step 4. Interpret early warning data. Step 5. Assign and provide interventions. Step 6. Monitor students and interventions. And Step 7. Evaluate and refine the eWIMS process. eWIMS can also be used in alignment with the implementation of a multi-tiered system of supports as educators work to match instruction and social-emotional behavioral supports with students' needs. The primary goal of an early warning system is to ensure that students receive the support they need to be successful in school. eWIMS aims to utilize data to learn more about a student's school experience and the effectiveness of the school system, match students with intervention supports that may help them achieve academic success and social-emotional behavioral health. Monitor students' progress and modify intervention as needed. When teams implement an eWIMS, decision-making is informed by data. Teams examine school-wide data to monitor the health of the entire school system and areas where Tier 1 supports need to be strengthened to ensure at least 80% of students are meeting attendance, behavioral, social, emotional, and course performance goals without additional intervention. Teams analyze ABC data to find students who need more support to stay on track for graduation. Teams continue using data to examine the impact of changes made to school-wide systems and individual student supports. How do you structure supports for students after looking at data? Well, like I said, we have uh, multiple tiers of support. Some of them are meant for the entire population. Uh, those are the tier one, then we have tier two, and then we have tier three supports as well. How do you find time to provide academic intervention supports? We try to pull students, we have what's called a seminar. It's, I guess back in my day, it would have been called a study hall. Um, it's a seminar, we pull kids out of their seminar and after the student has been identified, we benchmark them backwards and we either work on bolstering their math skills or English skills. And we'll do that out of seminar or we'll do that out of um, one of their elective classes so they don't lose time in math or English. What results are you seeing since implementing MTSS and using early warning indicator data? I'm very competitive. I want to know how my school is doing compared to other schools in the DSISD or in the state. And I, I believe because of the way we um, analyze our data and then match up students to appropriate interventions, it has made us one of the more successful schools in the UP academically. How do you use data to support students and make decisions within the eWIMS process? Data was utilized to drive all decisions related to providing multi-tier system of supports for students. We would take a look at our data in terms of attendance, discipline, issues related to truancy, referrals, suspensions, et cetera. I work collaboratively with my team. We would meet once a week to kind of look at our students who are struggling the most, those tier three students, to think about options and opportunities to provide for them in terms of providing equitable opportunities for all students. So we would meet weekly, review the data, find those tier three students that were at the top of the list, and then work diligently to tailor interventions to meet the needs towards the diverse needs of those students. What changes have you seen in your school's data as a result of eWIMS? As we saw these supports interventions, 
we noticed a 67% decrease in out of school suspensions, a 61% decrease in office referrals, which is excellent because we know it's imperative the kids are in class due to the need to maximize instructional time. And we saw a 40% boost in regular positive attendance. Our initial attendance goals for the school district, well, for our school was 80%. We ended up hitting about 92% after we put these interventions in place. Also, I think one of the key things we really found is that the kids were happier, families were happier. I think it's the most important thing. They felt supported. The word got out around what we were doing at the school that increased our enrollment and it provided a positive light on not only our school, but the district and Lansing as a whole. Have you seen EUMs make a difference for a student? We had a student that really comes to mind was getting bullied quite a bit because he would often wear the same clothes to school and the clothes were not clean. So the kids would tease him, which led to the student just not coming to school because he got frustrated with being teased. It took a while for the student to come to administration to say this is what's happening. Otherwise, he could have intervened earlier. So we reached out to him. Mom just indicated I'm struggling a lot right now. We don't have running water in the house. He's not coming because kids are picking on him. I don't want kids making fun of him for being dirty and for smelling. So I'm just keeping him home for a while. So we let her know that we had supports available. We provided her with laundry detergent, soap, et cetera, deodorant, personal items. I connected her with one of my friends that I previously worked with at the Department of Human Services to ensure that she had her water cut back on. We raised funding to actually pay the water bill, which is about $414. We raised funds to pay that water bill to connect her with the case manager. We got her set up with DHS. He started feeling better. We got him set up with the counselor at the school. We talked with the kids he identified. The kids were very apologetic, which I thought was great. They indicated they were just joking around. They didn't realize that, that it resulted in him not coming to school. So they laid off of him. There was no more bullying. We also purchased a washer and dryer for the school. So if something arose where he or any other students needed support and need to wash their clothes, families have the opportunity to come to the school in the morning, during the day or after school, if they need to wash their clothes because we wanna do all we can to meet the needs of the families and make sure that no one feels excluded and everyone has the support to come to school on time every day and stay for the entire day. So that was one of the success stories that really stands out in my mind. What have you done to support high attendance rates? Some of the supports our school district provides for students with uh, attendance difficulties. Uh, we, we started a really great program um, last year and it was really didn't really cost a whole lot or next to nothing. We started out with a, with a tier one approach and we want to hit all the students. We had students get involved with the attendance and had our art department started creating uh, posters to put around our entire uh, uh, building in the hallways and the classrooms. And then teachers were able to select one of the posters and, and proudly hang it up in the, outside their door wall. Uh, one that was really catchy was in front of the uh, building trades called uh, Cut Wood, Not Class. Um, so we started out with like a tier one approach and looked at how can we let everyone know the importance of being to school every day? Uh, we also tied that in with some data regarding, um, uh, you know, what does it look like if you were missing in school compared to missing school, I mean, missing work um, in a career or a field that you're in and how that can affect you. How do staff check in with students who are not attending regularly? We met together as a team and as, as, as staff, and we took a look at the students that were on that threshold of possibly being truant if they continued their path. And we started literally just discussing the, the students and seeing what teachers may have had connections with them. Um, and uh, teachers would pick up a student and they would put them in on, write their name down for them to take uh, charge of. And if ever that student was ever absent during a school day, we would, that teacher would give them a call from home and just say, hey, you know, we're, we're, we're sorry that you're, you're not here. We missed you in class today. This is what we covered. Is there anything that we can help you out? So it's more of a, a phone call of saying we missed you. And that really went a long ways with that intervention of acknowledging that we've missed them when they're not in the classroom. And that greatly improved uh, students' attendance, not only as a whole, but also as individuals that were on that risk of being truant. Um, more so, 
so much that when we started looking at our data in terms of the students' attendance rates as a building and as well as an individual, our uh, attendance started getting higher and higher and higher on average on a daily rate from one quarter to another. Uh, so that small little intervention, which cost nothing to our district, uh, was very powerful. How do you use data to support students across classrooms? Um, another one, another example of a student um, that we looked at with um, at grade levels regarding support and the impact it made on that student is I was talking with the eighth, another eighth grade teacher and she was having a, a difficult time behaviorally with that student. And I knew in my classroom that um, he did well. We made a great connection. Uh, we had the same type of hobbies and interests. And I said, look, let me, and I, and I talked to the other teacher, I said, let me take that student on. Let me start talking about in my classroom between classes, you know, how is it going in your classroom? You know, how is, you know, do you, do you realize the impact that you're making in the classroom in my classroom? And are you doing the same positive impacts in the other classrooms that you are uh, visiting throughout the day? And getting a student to start talking openly about that and realizing that, hey, I am um, not behaving or uh, um, uh, following the expectations in other classrooms. And he realized that I realized that as well. Um, that dialogue opened up and the student ended up throughout the course of the year uh, becoming a model student in the other classes as well. What benefits are teachers and families seeing? Um, change that I've seen is actually not necessarily in the students. It trickles down to that because obviously they're the end result and goal, but I've actually seen the most change in our staff, particularly teachers, because we have um, shown that we're actually responding to the data that is being shown to us by the kids that they have in their classroom. So it's not just, oh, we think that we're having a dropout problem or we're having concerns with attendance. It's, this is the concern we have, this is what we're gonna do about it, and then we're gonna follow up and see based on the data if that's actually worked. So I think my teachers are, are getting more and more buy-in and then that trickles down to their students and working with parents because they're seeing that they're being listened to, that they're being valued, and that there's actually some evidence that either something doesn't work and so we change it or something is working so you continue and try to make it better. What advice would you give? Have buy-in, so share from the very beginning what your intentions are and what goals you would like to meet using um, EWIMS. And then um, I would also say to kind of stay the course. So with any initiative, your uh, initial reaction is to get trained in it and then go back to your school and use it um, and not want to go back and kind of get updates and, you know, those kinds of things. But just to keep doing that as much as you think that it's a one and done kind of initiative, it's not. And um, you need to uh, create your team and then support your team and be kind of a team cheerleader in order to, for this um, to continue and to become like the great process that it should be in your school district. We do use early warning indicators to stop kids from slipping through the cracks. Your students that are quiet, your students that don't get noticed, sometimes those are the ones that slip away and when you use data to, to focus in on them, that's when you can support them properly. Other people would want to use eWIMS because it helps you organize your improvement process. To learn more about early warning intervention and monitoring systems, visit the Michigan Department of Education's eWIMS webpage at mi.gov forward slash mde dash E-W-I-M-S.